play for everyone. It's really my goal to break down as many barriers as possible. So I'm hoping to reach as many people as possible. Why not the harpsichord? <laughs> uh, seriously, I do understand that question because I know that for a lot of people, the harpsichord can be an annoying sounding instrument or something that they associate with uh, a long gone historical period or something that is really old fashioned. Obviously, I don't experience the instrument that way at all or I wouldn't be spending my life doing this thing. Um, and what I really aim to do is to share with other people the way that I perceive the harpsichord. Not only is some of the most amazing music in history written for the instrument, for me, uh, there's this kind of endless horizon of colors and dynamics and nuances that can be found in the instrument. And I hope to bring people along with me on that journey of experiencing the harpsichord that way. That's a tricky question, um, somewhat fraught perhaps, but my personal belief is that any kind of complicated and enveloping music of whatever background is really addictive. Uh, and if you get used to listening to music like that, uh, you'll want more and more of it. Uh, we see that, for example, with how involved people get with uh, complex TV shows or films. Um, and I think a lot of people feel like, well, I can't listen to classical music because I don't understand it. And we've put a lot of emphasis on educating audiences. I think ultimately that risks pushing people away. And I think that if you're simply exposed to it on a regular basis and to a wide variety of different kinds of classical music, uh, you will find your thing. That might be Mahler, that might be Machaut, that might be Bach, uh, but you're going to enjoy that experience more and more. And I want to be able to provide people with as many opportunities as possible to have that kind of out-of-body experience that I had as a child and continue to have when I experience classical music, both as a performer and as a listener. So for my upcoming tour, um, I've been lucky to have a couple of them in the last year or two. Um, this one is with my ensemble partner, um, Jérôme Altai, who is a very uh, well-known French gamba player, a real pioneer for the instrument. And we have a really unique musical connection, a lot of uh, artistic chemistry. And we're going to be performing several times on the East Coast in New York at La Maison Française NYU, uh, at Ravensong in Philadelphia, at Capriccio Baroque in Washington, DC. <laughs> and then on the West Coast, uh, there's a masterclass at San Francisco Conservatory. There's a concert on masterclass at UC Davis. And finally, a concert on the Barefoot Chamber series in Berkeley. Uh, we're playing a combination of French Baroque music, which is extremely uh, ornamented and gorgeous. And I think there's a strong emphasis on improvisation in that music between the two of us. There's Bach on the program as well. I'm playing uh, solo, I'm playing the sixth partita, which I'm really excited about because that's a piece that I spent a lot of time with as a teenager and I'm now returning to. And then we're playing uh, some of the Bach obligato sonatas for harpsichord and viola da gamba, which means that I am a solo instrument alongside or in equal parts with the with the gamba. And I feel like uh, our, our duo kind of transcends a lot of barriers, language, culture, age, background. And it just goes to show how explosive and dynamic performance on early instruments can be. And I'm really excited about that, and I'm particularly excited to bring that back home to the U.S., where I'm hoping to participate in the continued growth and expansion of early music in concert halls across the country. So we're looking forward to seeing you there. <laughs>